Hang tight folks, this one's a doozy. In a previous video, we talked about the SEO heist. To pull off an SEO heist, number one, export a competitor's sitemap. Number two, turn their list of URLs into article titles. And then number three, use AI to generate all the articles for those URLs. So in this video, we're gonna pull off an SEO heist. I'm gonna show you guys the tool that does it. There's gonna be a full tutorial on how to build that tool yourself. I use Bubble to build the tool. We're gonna to show how to connect it, how to use GPT-4, how to use the ChatGPT API calls, how to use ChatGPT to get the article titles or the URLs. And if you stick around till the end, I got a special treat for you. This was one of my most requested videos. Let's get into it. All right, step one, we need a competitor's sitemap. So this is a sample competitor. I'm starting an investing blog. And to get the sitemap of a competitor, you type in the URL, their website name. In this example, it's earlyretirementnow.com and then slash sitemap.xml. Now you'll see there's a dash one in here. When I went to sitemap.xml, it gave me three options. So I chose the first sitemap. And as you can see, we have all the URLs of this website. This is like an article published in 2016 called Early Retirement Math-101. So if I click into this, my guess is this is an article about how to invest for retirement. So we got a nice list of URLs here. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I'll get more recent ones. So this is 2021. Down here is 2023. And this one was published this month. So now that I have a list of URLs, I have to export this sitemap into a CSV file. And we do that by Googling a free XML to CSV converter. I like this one. And we're gonna enter a URL and we're gonna take this sitemap URL, copy it and paste it in here. So now it has loaded the entire sitemap. I can convert to CSV and I'm gonna click save to disk. I've opened this file in a Google Sheets. Let's just adjust some of the headers, make it more readable. And we only need the first column. So in this example, I'm gonna take just the last few articles, let's say the last 50. And I'm gonna start from the bottom, I'm gonna scroll up, and let's just copy up to here. So copy. Now we're gonna to go to ChatGPT, and I'm gonna write this prompt. Here are a list of URLs. Please take the text after the last forward slash and separate each one with a comma. So our goal is to just get the slugs of all these URLs. We're gonna use these keywords to make article titles. So let's add them all in here and let's see what ChatGPT can do with that prompt. Perfect, you can see it's starting to grab the slugs. It hasn't separated them with a comma, so I'm gonna to have to run this again. But I like that we're getting what we asked for. We'll come back to this in a second. Now it's time to go to Bubble. So here we are in Bubble and we're gonna need three pages. We're gonna need a home page. This is the blog home that people are gonna land on, shows the latest posts, and it shows a list of all your articles. We're gonna need a blog post page. This is the actual article page that people are gonna click in to read. And we need a page to host the autoblogger. This is the page where we're gonna input our keywords and then start generating all of the articles for all the URLs. And then the other important connection is we need to make API calls to ChatGPT specifically GPT-4 Turbo and Dolly 3 to get the content for our blog posts. In your bubble editor, go to the left and click data. And this is your data types. We are making a CMS to house our blog articles. I call the data type post. So a new type, I'll just redo what I did here and you can follow along. Call it post for this, I'll call it post two, click create. Now we're gonna need some new fields. First, we're gonna need the blog post title. I call this just title, and it is a text. Let's hit create. Next, we're gonna need an image. So I'm gonna call this field image, and the field type is image. Simple enough, hit create. Next, we're gonna need the actual content. So I call this content, and it's a field type text. Hit create. We're gonna need a meta description. This is for SEO purposes. I just call this meta description. And again, it's text, hit create. We're also gonna need metadata for the image. So I like to do image meta. 
This is also text hit create. And our slug, the slug is the URL. That is built in field. So the blog home looks pretty fancy, but it's all just visuals. The most important part here is a repeating group. On the left hand side, you're going to scroll down and you're going to add a repeating group to the page. Clicking in, the repeating group's type of content is the post. That's the data type that we just created. And the data source is we're going to search for posts. And I like to sort by the created date. So it will show us the four most recent posts. The stuff in here is just visual. I have an image, which is the image of the article. I'm grabbing the post title and then a link that you can click in to read more. That goes to the blog page. And then down here is another repeating group, but this time it shows all of the articles that we've created on the website. On the blog post page, I'm going to double click here on the outside and make sure that the type of content is post. This page is going to house our article. And inside the page, you have the post title. Now this little text I added for the fun of it. It tells you how long it's going to take to read the article. And what I did was I found the average reading speed, which is 238 words per minute. So I'm taking the current page's post content. That's the content that we're going to spit out. I'm splitting that content by space. So in between these little brackets is just one space. And after every word is a space. So that's how I'm splitting it. And then I'm dividing that total count by 238. This ceiling is just a roundup feature. So in the end, you'll get a certain amount of minutes. It could be three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, depending on the article size. Right? We have some share buttons here. The share buttons are a plugin. If you click plugins, they are called add to any share. It's a free plugin that you can add by clicking add plugins and searching for this. Then we have the post image. We're going to generate this with Dolly and it's going to automatically display on the page. Scrolling down, we have the post content. Simple enough, going to be generated by GPT-4. And then we have related blog post section at the bottom, which again is another repeating group that I grabbed from the blog home page. Just made it look a bit different. Again, this is all visual stuff. You can make it look how you want. This is just basic visuals. And then the reader can click in to read another post. If I double click on the repeating group, zoom in here, what it's doing is it's searching for all the posts in your database, but this time I'm filtering it and it's just random sorting. So each time you refresh the page, you're going to get a random three articles displayed at the bottom. And I'm doing items until four, which means the first three items. All right, those are the two UI sections. Now let's get to the good stuff. The auto blogger page is for the owner's eyes only. They can input their keywords, click generate posts, and it's going to make a bunch of posts for them. So how this works is this right here is a multi drop down input and it doesn't come default with bubble. You actually have to go to plugins and you've got to install this one multi select drop down. This will create the input where each choice in this input is separated by a comma. If I load this page, you can see how it looks. So this is the input. Let's say I had a keyword AI writer. I type AI writer, hit enter, and it makes a tag. Let's do the keto diet, another tag. So this input now has two keywords that when I click generate posts, it's going to make two articles, two separate articles. Eventually, when I paste in all of those URLs, it's going to make multiple tags. If I had 50 of them, it'd make 50 tags. And then when you click generate posts, it's going to generate articles for all 50 tags. I'll talk about what's down here a bit later, but for now we're just going to focus on this. So in order for the auto blogger to work, we need to make an API call to GPT-4. And we do that with a plugin. Click plugins. I'm going to go to the API connector. And I have an API call named OpenAI. I'm going to expand it. First, we need two shared headers. The first key is content dash type and the value is application slash JSON. This is saying that it's going to send a JSON as an API call and we're going to get a JSON back. Then you need the authorization key with your secret key from OpenAI. Don't worry about copying this. I'm going to delete this after the video for all you hackers. How to get a secret key 
is we're gonna go to platform.openai.com. This is chat GPT, but for developers. And you grab your API key well, on the left bar, you're gonna hover over and click API keys, and then you're gonna generate a new secret key. You can name it whatever you want. Let's say my secret key. Hit this button, and it's gonna create a secret key for you. So I can click done, I can delete this key because I already have one in place. I'm not sure if they still give you a free $10 to test the API. I know back in the day they did. Sorry if that's not updated information, but it's worth a shot. If you don't have a developer account with OpenAI, you're gonna to have to create one. You also have this usage tab, which tells you the costs of all your API calls. Now for pricing, if you search OpenAI pricing and click into this page, you're gonna see the cost of GPT-4 Turbo. You can also use GPT-3.5 Turbo to generate your articles. It is significantly cheaper, but the quality of GPT-4 Turbo is so high I recommend just eating the costs. And the costs are, you can see the inputs, which for our use case is very small. It's gonna be negligible, but the output is gonna be three cents per 1,000 tokens. And if we're making 2,500 to 3,000 word articles, that might add up. So it's gonna cost you anywhere from five to 15 cents per article but also we're gonna be generating images with Dolly 3. So if I scroll down to image models, Dolly 3 landscape image is eight cents per image. So you gotta add that into your article costs. So now we're looking at roughly 15 to 20 cents per article. I wish this was cheaper. Again, you can get around this by maybe doing Dolly 2 images instead and then using GPT 3.5 Turbo to generate the articles, that might cost you only one to two cents per article. But again, you're gonna have a quality issue. It's the price to pay to eventually get traffic to your website. So back in the API call, I have two calls. I got one to GPT 4 and one to Dolly 3. I'm gonna expand this. So first you need a URL to post to. And I got all this information Let's open up this platform.openai.com again. And in the documentation, if you go to text generation and scroll down to chat completions, this is the URL right here. They tell you everything you need for your API calls. So I pretty much just copied this. So that's the URL. And then this is the JSON object. In Bubble, when you put a phrase or some words around the triangle caret brackets, you're able to dynamically change what the input is. So I gave you an option with the model if you wanna change from the GPT-4 Turbo to GPT-3.5, definitely possible. And we need content, cause that's gonna be dynamic. And then I also like a max tokens. This tells the API what's the max amount of tokens to spit out in its output, so it doesn't go crazy and cost you a lot of money. No need to pause the video to get this text. I got it directly from here. And when you're ready, you're gonna hit reinitialize call. My test call is just telling the AI to count to 10. I'm gonna click this, it's gonna take a second. And then I'm ignoring all of the fields of the return values that you get back, cause we don't need this stuff. I don't care when it was created, what model I used. All I care about is the message content. And if you zoom in, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So it counted to 10. Let's save that. The next call is Dolly 3, I'm gonna expand this. Same thing, I got this URL from the documentation. Here it is. And then we need a JSON body. So our model is Dolly3. The prompt is gonna be dynamic. Remember, we got those caret brackets. And then we have a size option. I like the landscape images. So for my test image, I just wrote illustration cartoon of an AI writer. Not a big deal what you write here. You just wanna see if the prompt works. I'm gonna hit reinitialize call. And this takes a few seconds because it's Dolly 3. And what returns is these values. Now we need the revised prompt. This is gonna be our image metadata that I showed earlier. And then of course we need the URL. This is the actual image. And if I copy this URL and I paste it into a browser, this is the image or illustration of an AI writer. Beautiful image. Unfortunately, that was eight cents. Let's save it. Okay, now we got our API connection in place. I'm gonna go back to this page and we need something for this button to do. So 
double click the button and click edit workflow. And this is the workflow I have for that button. First off, this button only triggers when that multi dropdown has a value count of greater than one. And what that means is this button is not going to work. You can see it's grayed out if there's not a keyword in here. I don't want it to trigger if there's nothing involved. Very simple stuff. And once this button's clicked, it's going to trigger this workflow. Four steps. First step. Okay, sorry, I just had to make a quick edit to this workflow. I made a mistake. So when this button's clicked, first it's going to show a pop-up. You don't have to have this, but I like to have it for UI. It just says your articles are being written by the AI. Please check back later to see the results. Next, it's going to schedule an API workflow. We're going to look at that in one second. But the third step, it's going to reset the input. If there was 50 tags in that input, it's going to wipe it clean to zero. Okay, so what is this API workflow? This is a complicated step. So if you go to the top here and select backend workflows, I created a new workflow, a new API workflow called Autoblogger. And this Autoblogger backend workflow takes two inputs. First, it takes a list of keywords. What are those lists of keywords? Well, it's the list of keywords that come in the multi dropdown input box. Next, it's storing an item number. If you have 50 keywords, we need to know which keyword our workflow is on. Is it on the first one, the second one, the 15th one? So this item number tracks that. So the keywords is a text and you have to make sure you select it as a list array. And then the item number is just a number. That is not a list, that's just one number. So back on the auto blogger page, when I'm triggering this workflow, what are we sending over? First, we're selecting that workflow, which is the auto blogger. The schedule date is the current date and time. Okay, you click this, scroll down, and I just select the current date and time. Keywords, what keywords are we grabbing? Well, we're grabbing the multi drop down input box, that's this, and we're grabbing its value. That's a list of all of the tags, all of the keywords in that input box. And then we have an item number. We're starting with one. We want to start with the first keyword. Now go over to the back end workflow and we have everything to start. This back end workflow has one, two, three, four, five steps. Okay, first step. We are going to send an API call to GPT-4. And the content of this API call is like we're writing a prompt in ChatGPT. Instead of the input box here, we have an input box here. And the input that I found worked the best is write a short and simple title for an article about, and then we're gonna take that first keyword item. The keywords, that's that list of tags that we have. And then the item number is the item number that we grab here. So it's going to start with one. So this means it's going to grab the first keyword. If our first keyword was keto diet, it's going to be write a short and simple title for an article about keto diet. The max tokens, I have it as 100. It's very small. We just want a small title. And then the model, we're using GPT-4 Turbo. The next step, now we're going to write the content for the article. So I use write an SEO optimized article about and then I do the result of that step one. So we send an input to the API call and then we get an output back. Now we don't know what the output's gonna be. It's gonna be different every time. You've worked with ChatGPT. You know that every result is different and that's the cool thing about it. So it's getting the result of step one. Now the JSON it returns in the API call is an array. That means it's a list. So we're just grabbing the first item in that list and there's only one item. This is silly that we have to do this, but just how JSON works. And then we're grabbing the message content. So that's going to be the article title. I used to trim it back in the day because sometimes there'd be some weird spaces. I don't know if this is needed anymore with GPT-4, but I just had this just in case. And then the max tokens this time is 3,000. 3,000 tokens is probably a 2,000 to 2,500 word article. And then finally, the model is GPT-4 Turbo. The next step is Dolly 3, the size, we're making a landscape image and the prompt is whatever we had in step one. It's just going to take the article title that was generated with this API call and then make an image from it. So you'll notice it's the exact same prompt we used in the second step, 
but instead of generating text content, we're generating an image. Step four, we're creating a post. The post is what we have in the database. Remember, we made this post. We had content, image, image metadata, meta description, and a title. And what we're doing is we're filling in all that information. I like to keep track of the keyword. That is that URL slug. You don't have to do this, I like to do this. The content is obviously what we get from the second API call. The title is what we get from that first API call. The image is what we get from that third API call. And then the image metadata is the revised prompt. Now, when you use Dolly 3, you'll notice that your small prompt always makes a larger prompt when they actually generate the image. So they're doing the exact same thing in the API call. So I take that entire prompt that the AI uses to generate the image and I just use it as the image metadata. And then the last step is we're gonna schedule this exact same API workflow. It's gonna run it all the way through again and then all the way through again. It's gonna start right away on the current date and time. We gotta keep that keywords list. Remember all those tags in the multi drop down. We need to keep those, but this time the item number is the current item number plus one. If we started at one, what is this doing? It's going to two. So it's gonna to go to the second tag, the second keyword in the list. And then I only run this if the keywords count is greater than the item number. So let's say we had 50 total keywords and the item number is at 40, it's gonna run. Why? Because we have 10 more left. Let's say the keyword count was 50 and the item number was at 50, ah, that's not greater than anymore, that's equal to. So then this workflow stops. So it starts automatically, it runs through as many times as needed, and then it ends automatically. So if you have 100 keywords, 150 keywords, 1,000 keywords, it's gonna run 1,000 times in the back end without you having to do anything and then stop once it reaches the end of the list. All right, so should we test this? Let's see what we can do. First off, in order to use backend workflows, this is what we just walked through here, you do need to be on the starter plan. You can't be on the free plan, but Bubble gives you a 14 day free trial. So you can start this up, you can test it out, you can generate a bunch of articles, you can see how it's working, and then decide if you wanna continue. So everything's gonna be completely free to start. All right, let's test it out. Let's go grab those URLs from ChatGPT. So these are the URLs. It didn't separate them by a comma. I'm gonna say it again. And there we go, it's adding a comma to the end. So I'm gonna stop now. I'm not doing this for real, so I don't wanna generate 100 articles, but let's just do these ones here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. perfect. We'll start with 10. I'm gonna to go to our auto blogger, I'm gonna paste these in. And look at this, it made tags for all 10 of those URLs. All we have to do is click generate posts. We got the pop-up, the articles are being written by AI, check back later to see the results. So I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna pause the video, and I'm gonna resume when they're all ready. Okay, it's generated 10 articles. Now I learned a few things. There's a couple things I don't like that I think we should fix. All right, first off, I completely forgot to set the URL slug. That's the whole point of the SEO heist is to take the same URL. So back in bubble, I'm gonna to go to the back end workflow and we're gonna add another step. I'm gonna click the arrow right here and under data, I'm gonna go set a thing slug. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the result of step four. So that's that new post that we're creating and the slug that we're setting is the keyword. So we'll go keyword, item number, the item number of this workflow. Because in this example, each keyword is that URL slug. So we're gonna set our slug to be the exact same thing. The second thing I noticed, I got really lazy with the URLs I chose. These URLs are horrible. Like bucket strategies, SWR series part 48, part eight here, 2022, our three year fire anniversary and M approved crypto are the only two good URL slugs that we can actually use. So if I was doing this again, I would make sure that I cleaned up the URLs before I put them into the input box because then GPT-4 spit out a part eight. We don't even have parts one through seven. 
the next thing I learned. So this is our blog homepage. Now it's been populated with all of these new articles. Here are the Dolly 3 images it created. Here are all the articles, the 10 articles it spit out. If I go to one, let's say our three year fire anniversary. See, read it in three minutes. That triggered correctly. Scrolling down, the format didn't stick. Bubble formats its text in BB code. And GPT-4 Turbo is obviously doing markdown with the two stars for bolding this section. So what I'd have to do is, in our backend workflow, I'm gonna click Auto Blogger. We're gonna go to our content prompt. We need to add the output needs to be in BB code format. So when we get it back, our articles will actually look good. So I'll play around with this and make sure it's right. All right, you stuck around this long. I promised I had a treat for you. So I'm giving away this template for free. You're gonna be able to download Autoblogger templates for free on Bubble and start your blog, no charge at all. That's why I kind of went through this really fast. I didn't explain in detail because this channel, it isn't a Bubble tutorial. This is about AI and automation. So I just wanted to quickly walk through it to give you an idea of what is happening. But here, I'm gonna give you all of this work. You can take it, you can edit it. Uh, you can change the colors on the home screen, add your logo, add more pages. It's all in your hands. I'm giving you the bare bones, the framework, so you can get it started today. So I just pushed this to the Bubble Marketplace. It's gonna take a few days for Bubble to approve it. But once it's approved, I'm gonna drop a link in the description below. If you're watching this ahead of time, leave a comment that you're interested in this free template because I'm gonna get that comment and I'll be able to send you a link directly. I'll respond directly to your comment, give you the link. You can install this template on your new Bubble app and get going right away. Start creating thousands of articles right away. So what you need to know about this template is I built a section for you down here where you'll be able to manually edit all of the posts that the AI made. So I'm gonna click this right here. Here you can change the title. Let's like remove these quotation marks. You can change the image if you don't like what Dolly created. This is the image metadata. You know, you can edit the content. For this, I changed the headings. I turned this manually into BB code because I already made a mistake, but I'm changing the prompt so that all future outputs are BB code. So hopefully you won't have to do this. I'll also fiddle around so it doesn't give you the meta description. We already have that, but you have an edit feature here. You can write in the meta description and change the slug. We already fixed the slug to be automatic. Let's quickly fix the meta description to be automatic too. So in the backend workflow, I'm gonna add one more thing, the meta description, and let's make it the result of step two. So that's our content. You know, it's the first items message content. And we're going to truncate this to 150 characters because for SEO, the meta description should be roughly this. And there we go. That's all automatic now. Once you're finished editing your blog post, you can scroll down and click save changes and that's going to update your blog post. You also need to add your own API key. So in the plugins tab, you're going to go to API connector. You're going to expand this API call and you're going to change it to your secret key. Make sure you keep the bare space and then add your secret key. Remember we created one earlier. And then once that's done, you'll be ready to go. I'm gonna leave you with one last tip. To get your pages indexed faster by Google, go to settings, you're gonna to go to SEO and meta tags, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna expose a sitemap file. Click this right here. Now we wanna expose the main index page and all of the blog posts. So now we can grab our own sitemap file. We can go to the Google Search Console. We can upload our sitemap file, which helps Google index our pages faster. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.